Assalamu alaikum alaykum all, <laughs> everyone, mashallah. So you can see the title is Light and Darkness, mashallah. Um, so this presentation is a bit of uh, a mix of um, some scientific facts about light and darkness, its value in the literature and poetry, um, some reflection on my own personal journey, but mostly about God's allegorical analogies from the Quran. So there is a disclaimer that I'm absolutely not any kind of a science, physics, or chemistry genius. Like, mashallah, some of the presentations were so mathematically high above me. Most of the material here is either Googled or copied and pasted verses from the Quran. God has cited several example. Um, so God has cited several examples of contrast. You can say antithesis uh, in the Quran for us to understand and feel the difference of the opposite of things so we can reflect and take heed. Antithesis definition. So that literal meaning opposite is a rhetorical device in which two opposite ideas are put together in a sentence to achieve a contrasting effect. How does, um, for example, love and hate, good and evil, peace and war. Um, so in the literature, Shakespeare has used light and darkness in, in Romeo and Juliet. So um, one of the most visual motives in the play is the contrast between light and dark. This is often expressed in terms of night, day imagery. The meaning of light, dark, or night, day is different from one might imagine. It's a little bit different in his play. Light is not always good, and dark is not always evil. Light and dark are typically used to demonstrate contrast. Juliet describes Romeo as the stars shining brightly in the night sky, while Romeo describes Juliet as the sun who banishes the envious moon. So interesting. Up, yeah. Opposites are used frequently in Romeo and Juliet. They highlight and conflict the story. So we can find lots of references to light and darkness, or love and hatred. One of the most often, um, often repeated image patterns in Romeo and Juliet involves the interplay of light and darkness. For example, Romeo compares Juliet. Light and dark imagery in the Bible. Now we move to Bible. In the Bible, darkness is seen as the antithesis of light, with light being the symbol of God's purity, glory, and wisdom. The Bible does use darkness to symbolize depravity, disobedience to God, the un unenviable place of the dead, the place where the wicked sit, and a place of punishment where wrongdoers will be cast. Uh, one. 5 John, this is the message we heard from him and declare to you, God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. God tells us in the Quran that he has given us every kind of example of matters of wisdom, that we need to understand his system and his laws so we can purify ourselves and attain salvation. Some examples of opposites or antithesis are cited such as 5100 proclaim the bad and the good are not the same even if the abundance of bad may impress you you shall reverence god even if you are in the minority or you who possess intelligence that you may succeed so you can see the good and the bad god has shown the contrast here are not the same we have to reflect here you know sometimes we just say you know whatever in this politically correct society, good and bad has kind of disappeared into one gray matter. 1035, say, does any of your idols guide to the truth? Say, God guides to the truth. Is one who guides to the truth more worthy of being followed or one who does not guide <clears throat> and needs guidance for himself? What is wrong with your judgment? So once again, all these you know, contrasts are one who guides, one who doesn't guide. We might, it might not sound 
really big. But it, God is asking a question. Are they the same? Not. The one who gui- doesn't guide doesn't care. You go nowhere with this person or this community or this whatever entity that is. Okay. Mashallah. Six one. Praise be to God who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the light. Yet those who disbelieve in their Lord continue to deviate. Six fifty. Say, I do not say to put. I do not say to you that I possess the treasures of God. Nor do I know the future. Nor do I say to you that I am an angel. I simply follow what is revealed to me. Say, is the blind the same as the seer? Do you not reflect? Another contrast came. That blind and the seer are not the same. It's a huge difference. They, it's like one absolutely see nothing. And one who can see everything. You know? What a difference. Like it's day and night. Other contrasts presented in the Quran are day and night, rich and poor, dead and alive, slave and master, black and white, truth versus falsehood, and so on. When I started to study the Quran during my very early days of submission, what impacted me most from these contrasting nature of parables was about the light and darkness from the Quran. In fact, it has started to become more of my focal point in submission now more than ever when I see the world around me. I believe God's system described in the Quran is very clear, and you can say it is very much black and white. The night the right from the wrong is very distinct. 2, 256. There shall be no compulsion in religion. The right way is now distinct from the wrong way. Anyone who denounces the devil and believes in God has grasped the strongest bond, one that never breaks. God is here, omniscient. I used to think when I was not a submitter, there was no such a thing as good or bad that there was a lot of gray everywhere. (laughs) Being politically correct, that meant. You see, it's the gray matter which is the most confusing for people. It's the gray which keeps us away, keeps you away from seeing the clarity and is the biggest weapon of Satan in today's times. Political correctness is today's gauge of what is good and what is bad, even for your soul. This gray area and political correctness makes people become very comfortable and lets them sit on the fence instead of taking a stand against the falsehood. I can clearly remember how I used to feel before I had seen the light of faith. I felt being lost in complete darkness. This verse can clearly describe how I used to feel when I was really depressed. Many times I wished I did not live anymore. Since I found no purpose in life, and all I felt was hopelessness, emptiness, and darkness all around me. Now I know why I felt that way. Uh, 2440, exile from God, total darkness. Another allegory is that of being in total darkness in the midst of a violent ocean with waves upon waves, in addition to thick fog, darkness upon darkness. If he looked at his own hand, he could barely see it. Whomever God deprives of light will have no light. So that's how I used to feel, absolute darkness. It's like very, it, I've been very close to it. And Pathesis 2, 2440 could be this most amazing verse Subhanallah, and you can all guess that one, right? 2435. God. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The allegory of his light is that of a concave mirror behind a lamp that is placed inside a glass container. The glass container is like a bright pearl-like star. The fuel thereof is supplied from a blessed oil-producing tree that is neither eastern nor western. Its oil, its oil is almost self-radiating, needs no fire to ignite. Light upon light. Remember, darkness upon darkness, light upon light. Absolute contrast. God guides to his light whomever he wills. 
God the size the parables for the people. God is fully aware of all things. Subhanallah. What a writer, you know. Can you imagine like I was talking about Shakespeare as well and here is God with his parables and his comparisons and his contrasts. Subhanallah. God has guided us by sending his light to see the right path. If we turn un unappreciative and slide back, God can take away this light. Who can then guide us? God has cited the example of such disbelievers from 2.16 to 2.20 with strong analogies. 2.16, it is they who bought the string at the expense of guidance. Such trade never prospers, nor do they receive any guidance. Their example is like those who start a fire. Then as it begins to shed light around them, God takes, it, takes away their light, leaving them in darkness, unable to see. Deaf, dumb, and blind, they fall to return. Another example, a rainstorm from the sky in which there is darkness, thunder, and lightning. Pretty depressing. <laughs> they put their fingers in their ears to evade death. God is fully aware of the disbelievers. Now the light of faith. The lightning almost snatches away their eyesight, like it's too much for them. When it lights for them, they move forward. And when it turns dark, they stand still. If God wills, he can take away their hearing and their eyesight. God is omnipotent. For me, the contrast of light and darkness is extremely profound because the impact was very sudden for me, a total turn, a sudden flash of light. In that light, everything looked different. The reality of life changed in a flash. My kids used to think I've gone crazy, basically. The meaning of life was found, and I started to see colors and beauty of God's marvels everywhere instead of darkness and nothingness. Plants are colorful, plants and colorful flowers, crops and trees need light to grow. We humans need two kinds of lights to grow physically and spiritually to our full potentials. One is from the sun, which itself is a creation of God. And the other one is the light of guidance and faith for our soul to grow. Without the light, there is no distinction of any color. And without God's light, there is no distinction between good and evil. Many people might seem to be apparently living a good life, but could be committing the unforgivable sin of idol worship because they don't have the light. This earthly light known to us comes from the sun, which is 992.96 million miles away from us. If it rains for a few days constantly and we do not get to see the sun for a while, we can become depressed and moody and might experience SAD, seasonal affective disorder. Now, can we imagine being away from God's light? So I guess due to time restraints, uh, I'm going to skip a lot of uh, interesting slides. But um, God, I'm just going to read a couple of things here quickly. Um, God um, tells us that upholding the teachings of religious leaders instead of God's teachings, um, that, you know, th that can also um, take away our light from us. Um, and, you know, so the people believe in God, but it just doesn't happen. They set up other gods beside God. At the end, I would like to pray, and inshallah, if you want to join in this prayer. Um, Surah 113, day, Daybreak Al-Falak. And I just pray that God never takes away our light, that we always follow that beacon, you know, so we can never get lost in the dark and never slip away. Inshallah, Surah 113. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak from the evils among his creations, from the evils of darkness as it falls, from the evils of the troublemakers, from the evils of the envious when they envy. Thank you so much.